Welcome back to Stamping at the Warren. I'm Kim Tolton and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator and I live in Wickford which is in Essex in the UK um, and the card that I'm sharing with you today is from one of my favourites from this year. Um, it's from the Wonder, I'm using the Wonderland um, stamp set which is this one here. It's just a beautiful stamp um, and I've actually gone for it in wood mount um, this year because it is just so lush and I know that I will use it and use it and use it. So today is all about a bit of stamping, quite a bit of stamping and sponging. Now if you haven't done any sponging before you might want to get yourself some latex gloves um, particularly if you work or you have beautiful nails I don't have beautiful nails because I'm working with my hands either with the, the animals or with my card and paper craft um, so I'm afraid my nails never really get much longer than they are at the moment and they're often ink stained so there you go anyway that's this is the card that we're making um, and it's actually probably easier to make than you would imagine first looking at it now as always um, you need to start with your card base or your card blank it's the same thing um, it's just basically the card on which you will mount your card front um, I'm using an A6 card today so you want to trim a piece of the thicker whisper white cardstock to 21 centimeters here by 14.8 centimeters and then using either your scoring tool or the scoring blade on your stamping trimmer score down the middle of that long side at 10.5 centimeters and then always score always fold towards the creased side so the creases on the inside of the card it helps to stop the cardstock on the outside edge here from fracturing but it's also more aesthetic and then you can just pop that to one side because the last thing you want is beautiful inkiness all over your white card base. Um, the next step is your main panel and the main panel measures 14, point, uh, 14 centimeters by 9.7 centimeters um, and this is the main panel that we're going to be stamping. So the first thing to do is actually create this border here which I've done using the antlers in two different colors now you don't have to worry too much about um, how far over you come because we're going to have a central panel that overlaps all of that so there's no need to be too worried about it I tend to do it in diagonals um, just to give it a bit more of a uneven edge and don't always ink up between stamping because as you'll see there you get a difference in colour. Now I just need to spritz my stamp to clean it, piece of kitchen towel because you don't want to contaminate your beautiful ink pads with a different ink. So we'll pop that one away. No, we won't actually. I'll leave that open just for a moment. And then the next one we're using is Soft Suede. Um, and with this one, it's just giving that little bit of contrast. And you just want to sort of go the opposite way. And then just re-ink. And again, don't re-ink between each one. And it gives you that very rustic edge there. Not there and that's your soft suede finished with next you're going to stamp this um, main panel with um, the star and it's lovely it's so sweet and we're going very much tone on tone apart from that little bit of brown so just very gently because this is quite a small stamp I don't worry too much about um, inking it up whilst it's upside down 
and again just get a bit of variation in colour by not um, re-inking between each one and then that panel we just need to sponge now this section here we're going to sponge quite quite heavily with the mossy meadow and then I'm just going to use the residual ink to bring down into this now the last thing I want to do before we stamp this particular panel is I just want to put the sentiment on there and I'm using the um, all is calm all is bright and this one I do like to do upside down because I like to know I haven't got the ink all around the edges of the stamp and then that can go down fairly centrally and use your wood block or your clear block and look that's come out completely wrong so we'll start again and I'll start with my sentiment see there's one of the tips always turn your cardstock over right it's fine that time so we'll go back to what we were doing and I'll do some more stars just really randomly I'm doing it nice and quickly now to catch up with myself but I don't believe in editing um, because these are the the issues that face you when you're making cards um, and you you need to know how to get out of these situations without wasting lots and lots of card um, you know it's a resource that's expensive and I've lost my spritzer I bet any of you can you see there it is look it's always right by my hand when I work you can't really see here but this is pretty much how I work all the time so I have my um, grid paper on the bottom and then I um, and I have all my bits just surrounding there and then after each card that I make um, I simply tidy up up again now right so sponging this is just a piece of stamping sponge which is quite big um, there's a half there and I just cut it into wedges um, sometimes I do it into six sometimes I do it into four it depends how much I think I'm going to use um, and the other thing I tend to do is just take some of the ink off because you can see it can be a little bit patchy and you're better off to start with it lightly and re-ink your sponge and build the colour and then you get a really uh, so this particular part of the card I want this sponging to be quite heavy once you've been using your sponge you find you don't have to re-ink it um, and, and sort of ink it off quite so much but and then you're just gonna blend it all the way down and capture the edges <coughs> of your cardstock as well because it will leave a really lovely um, edge to your card I find sponging really therapeutic and I think the two techniques I always I associate with Christmas is um, heat embossing and uh, sponging for me that it's all about that and I do love sponging so I spend most of my life with ink stains all over my hands but I don't mind right so that's that bit done that then gets matte onto a piece of mossy meadow cardstock that measures 14 centimeters by 10.1 and I'm just going to use some fast fuse here and I know this is getting low so I'm leaving it to get low on purpose so that in one of my tutorials I can show you how to um, reload the cassette with a new new tape um, and you actually get a lot more in the refill tapes than you do in um, the original that comes with the cassette itself right so that's that bit next is to do this panel here and 
all I've done in terms of sponging here is a little bit very lightly around the edges just to give some contrast. So we're starting with a piece of Whisper White cardstock that measures 3.6 centimetres by um, 13.7 centimetres and we're using this gorgeous stamp here um, along with a few of the check I'm on mossy meadow yeah so just a few you don't want many of these just subtle there we go that's all we want and then um, this one here look at that isn't that lush and just ink it up and again you want to be I tend to go so it's like a zigzag and then it creates almost an arc shape which I find quite attractive there you go and I'm not going to re-ink that my sponge I'm just going to use the um, what's left on my sponge so be fairly firm but tiny tiny little circles you could use a sponge da dauber Although I find you, you can get a bit of a harsher um, edge, whereas sponging with a, a natural piece of sponge like this, you find the effect is a bit more subtle. And although there is some ink coming down onto the card, what you want is a bit of contrast um, so that the central panel is highlighted because it's whiter. There we go. There you are. That then gets matte. Matting just means layering, really. So it, it's how you frame, just like framing a picture, it's how you frame your different segments of your card. Um, and it just helps to identify it as a central area, as a piece of interest for the eye. Fast fuse, keep it close to the parallel to the piece of cardstock and always flick one way and then the other and that will give you less chance of the fast fuse doing its own thing and just sticking to everything and anything I've pretty much cracked it now so and then this is going to be mounted onto here but before I do that I just want to put a few bits of fast fuse here because we're going to wrap some gold cording trim just around two fingers about four times you can go a bit more if you want you can go less Grab my scissors there we go and then I try what I try to do is get the ends actually stuck onto the fast fuse and then that way when you turn it over you can just see the loops over there and you want few dimensionals on the back these are Stampin' Up's lovely hexagonal um, sticky fixer type things, foam pads which get into every corner possible they're fabulous peel off that backing sorry I'm going in front of the camera and then this comes down and you'll see what I mean um, here so this goes across and then some just a couple of these lovely um, snowflake elements and I, again I'm going to put I always put um, stamping dimensionals on the back they are hexagonal shape particularly on this one so you don't even see them actually from the front once they go on so I've got two slightly different ones again just for interest I'll put one can go up here and the other one down here so you can see that by having a dimensional on the back now the top doesn't want to come off um, it just adds that height which 
gives interest. And just to finish that off, some of the iced rhinestones, which are in the uh, current seasonal catalogue. If you want a catalogue um, and you live in the UK, I always give my catalogues out free of charge. So just drop me a line. Um, you'll find all of my details in the more information section underneath this video. And uh, yeah, just drop me a line by whichever format and um, I'll get a, a catalogue out to you so long as you give me your full address obviously and just what I'm going to do the smaller size these are in two sizes I'm going to pop one on there and one on there I just use my piercing tool because you can get right in underneath the glue dot there and there you have it I've done it slightly differently to this one so on this one this whole segment here was the antlers and I've actually done it so it's here but I, I think it still looks cool thank you um, again for watching today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow